Hey, thanks for watching. This is Odd Jobs 2 again. And I have just completed a step wall, pony wall, half wall, uh, dividing wall, whatever you want to call it. Depends on the area of the country you're from. But I just built one from scratch in my house. And I wanted to show it to you. I'm doing this in reverse because I just literally finished it. I still have all my, my tools out and there's dust all over the place. But uh, anyway, uh, we'll go backwards and I'll kind of tell you how I did it. Um, first and foremost, this has gone on top of an existing old uh, brick planter, which was popular in houses during the 50s. And basically I built a three-sided box around the planter and I also went up an extra foot because the planter height was kind of low. And uh, boxed it in. I used traditional uh, four by eight plywood for the box assembly and for the uh, the outer mill work here uh, basically I got some poplar which is uh, like a one by six or something similar and uh, built in the inner frame which is on all three sides I have a halogen light behind me so that's why you get the funky shadows and in the corners, I put cord around. And I'm showing this to you unpainted because painted, you can lose a lot of detail. And the side edge, I just put up this stock, this uh, trim work, and it comes up to the edge, and then there's another plywood top. So, um, it's probably about 60 man hours into it. Probably have about $400 into it. I like the way it came out. Um, started painting the other one. Uh, I wanted to show it to you unpainted because you can't really see the detail of it painted so much. But uh, that's that. You see how it came out. Looks pretty good. Now, what I would encourage anyone to do is to look at a lot of pictures on the internet uh, and see what kind of style of woodwork you want to go with and uh, just start building it from there. And it's kind of hard to show you, but uh, that's that. It came out pretty good. Pretty happy with it. And uh, thanks for watching. And uh, I'll show you some prior pictures and some in build pictures as well. Thanks. Bye. Well, I figure the best way to really show you guys how this thing's put together is to uh, kind of make an example of it based on scrap wood I had laying around from the leftover project. So, as discussed before, um, I've actually, this is a shrunk down example, obviously it's not the same height as the one I built, but for argument's sake, uh, this would, would represent looking at a cross section uh, of the construction, so uh, figure the, the block planter came up to here and went from there down, so uh, like I said before, you're boxing this in. So essentially, if I zoom in a little bit, you can see right in here, this is all what is what would be considered the inner box. Not the top, but just this. So it goes all the way, full length, top to bottom. And of course, on the corner, there's a piece that goes across. And then there's another piece that looks like a mirror um, opposite of this. From there, then... I put an outer square that went all the way around. And I'll pan to the side here so you can see what that would have looked like. And that was just like a, 
a three quarter inch by a six inch or five and three quarter poplar and basically we framed a rectangle around the whole length of the uh, the box. Now the one thing I would tell you when choosing material unfortunately you go to Home Depot or Lowe's a lot of times all you could find is plywood and that's fine um, as long as it's got a real beefy thick outer skin to it if it's a very if it's a plywood plywood that has a very thin uh, piece of uh, finished you know wood uh, stain grade surface on it uh, I would not recommend that because those eventually come unglued from the, the plywood and uh, start to peel and bubble and all that I actually used a scrap from another project and uh, you can see how the edges chip and all this so this one has a very thin skin of finished wood on it uh, sanding staining paint grade wood and what happens is in the other project I did uh, when you would cut it it would chip like crazy um, and it would also start to bubble and blister so put a lot of time into it and it ended up looking like hell so anyway you got your your outer poplar rectangle that you put on and then from there like I talked about before you have your top decorative trim you know as you buy the stuff by the foot at Home Depot and Lowe's and uh, um, usually like I recommended look at a lot of magazines to make sure your design looks right and flows usually when you look at crown mold or any type of woodwork or whatever when it has a squared in look to it uh, this top piece is thinner than this bottom piece um, so there's a couple different sizes of this I basically lopped off about a foot of each different size and then I had already nailed uh, on my my outer work woodwork here and then I just held them up here to see which one aesthetically looked right because I did want it to have a more defined bottom uh, wood uh, piece and a lesser top piece here now the other thing you can see by the side here is I nailed this up to the top of the surface and this is of course the, the surface that was about three feet and about six to seven feet long depending on which side I built uh, length of plywood and you can see that the plywood goes and rests on top of um, the box inner wood skin uh, assembly or frame whatever you want to call it and then also this so just to give it a little bit more support and uh, then just marry this up to this top uh, piece and then I used a ton of uh, heavy duty uh, wood putty sorry helicopter which also and I'll show you that wood putty in a second the other thing I did with mine because I had a, a three foot span here from top to bottom it's about halfway I nailed in some runners all the way down across to the other side um, and I did that just so not that there's a lot of weight on it but you know sometimes I didn't I don't want things to kind of balloon out midpoint so just to give it a little bit more rigidity and strength and of course after I built this whole assembly I also tied it in to the uh, the wall um, so mm, that's that now two products I used uh, in regards to the wood filler the, this stuff is killer good wood filler um, you know my experience with other wood fillers obviously it shrinks um, it gets a little crumbly um, you put it in a nail hole and cover it up and then next thing you know you know go to it later and it's it still has a 
you know, canyon or pop mark in it, and you have to put another layer on. This stuff works really good. Um, it's almost like there's something into it. Uh, when you sand it down, it's almost like it looks like there's a grit or some sort of other uh, substance in there. But uh, in any event, this stuff is bulletproof. It's almost like sanding Bondo or uh, green fiberglass uh, gel coat repair stuff. It's very. Um, once you put it on and it dries, it's very rigid and permanent and it doesn't seem to crack, um, shrink, all that that I already mentioned. Uh, I will tell you one thing that you will go through uh, a ton of sandpaper knocking this stuff down. So think about that uh, in regards to how much you put on. Uh, I did the surface of the step wall, I, I use this poly shade stain. Um, it's a penetrating stain. I've used it on other furniture that had uh, stain on it already, so it's a good penetrating stain where you can convert colors without really knocking down the prior layer of stain. Uh, on this project, it came out pretty good. Um, stain is a lot of extra work. I guess if I was going to do it all over again, I mean, I like the way it came out. I'm not complaining about that, but um, if I was going to do it again, I might have just done um, a coat of satin paint because uh, it probably would have been less coats, a lot easier, and um, and uh, probably a similar look. Um, however, the reason I use stain is because I figured it being a, a half wall, there's going to be a lot of stuff thrown on top of it, you know, groceries, backpacks, what have you, stuff that comes in from the store. And the reason I wanted to use a stain in that regard, at least on the top surface, was because I figured it would be subject to wear and tear, whereas paint I figured would nick and gouge and eventually wear through. So anyway, those are the two other products I used along with the project. Um, the other construction part of it. Everything's pretty much nailed together. I have a 16 gauge air nailer. I love that thing. I use it everywhere. And um, the whole project is pretty durable and feels bulletproof. And the fact that I built it over an existing planner, um, it, it feels solid. Uh, you know, it doesn't have a hollow uh, thump to it. Uh, the planner is is basically right right underneath all this stuff you know so this is essentially this half wall is essentially a cap that went on top of the existing planner so uh, you know planners rigid too so uh, it came out it came out really nice so and uh, really updated the look of of the house I got rid of that dated planner and um, also brought the step wall up an extra foot so it's a ni nice height and divides the room, but at the same time, it doesn't make you feel like you're you're blocking the uh, visual look of the room. You're not, you know, kind of trying to hide the room from the rest of the hallway and the rest of the house. So, anyway, uh, feel free to ask me questions and uh, look forward to your positive comments. Take care. Thanks.